In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration for different solutions. Let's focus on part A. We're given a solution of barium hydroxide, and the concentration is 0.03 m. What is the concentration of hydroxide in the solution? Barium hydroxide is soluble in water, and it's going to dissociate into the Ba2 plus ion and two hydroxide ions. So notice the ratio between barium hydroxide and hydroxide. It's a one to two ratio. So if the concentration of barium hydroxide is 0 0.03, this is going to dissolve. It's going to go to zero. So this is going to decrease by 0 0.03. This is going to increase by 0 0.03. This is going to increase at twice the rate at which this increases. So 0 0.03 times 6, this is going to go up by 0 0.06. So all you got to do to calculate the hydroxide concentration here is simply double this value. So for part A, the hydroxide concentration is simply 0 0.06 m. Now let's move on to part B. So we're given the H3O plus concentration, which is 1.4 times 10 to negative 5. How can we calculate the hydroxide concentration? The hydroxide concentration is going to be Kw divided by the H3O plus concentration. Kw is the auto ionization constant of water, and at 25 degrees Celsius, it's 1 times 10 to negative 14. And we can plug in the hydronium ion concentration, which is 1.4 times 10 to negative 5. So dividing those two numbers will give us our answer. Which is 7.14 times 10 to negative 10. So that's how we can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration if we're given the hydronium ion concentration. Now let's move on to part C. So for this one, we're given the pOH of the solution. To get the hydronium, I mean the hydroxide concentration from pOH, it's simply 10 to the negative pOH. So it's 10 to the negative 3.89. And that is going to be 1.29 times 10 to the minus 4. So that's how you can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration if you're given a pOH of the solution. Now for part D, we're given a pH. So we need to find the pOH first. The pOH is going to be 14 minus the pH. So that's 14 minus 5.14. And that gives us a pOH value of 8.86. Now, once you have the pOH, we could use this formula to get the hydroxide ion concentration. So that's 10 to the negative 8.86, which is going to be 1.38 times 10 to the negative 9. So now you know how to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration if you're given the pH of the solution or if you're given the pOH of the solution. So now let's move on to part E. So we have a solution, an acidic solution with hydrochloric acid. The, mol the molarity is 0.05 m. How can we calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. HCl is a strong acid. When we mix it with water, it's going to completely dissociate into H3O plus and chloride. So HCl is going to go down to zero. Now we have a one-to-one -one ratio, so the change is going to be 0.05.
what you need to know from this table is that the concentration of H3O plus is the same as the concentration of HCl. So because HCl is a strong acid, it will dissociate completely into H3O plus. So that tells us that the H3O plus concentration is 0.05. Now this problem becomes similar to part B. So now we can calculate the hydroxide concentration by taking Kw and dividing it by the hydronium ion concentration. So this is going to be 1 times 10 to negative 14 divided by 0 0.05. So it's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 13. So that's the hydroxide concentration for this solution in part E. Now let's move on to part F. HCl is a strong acid, but HF is a weak acid. So we're given the acid dissociation constant. So this is going to require a little more, a little more uh, work. So first, let's write the dissociation reaction between hydrofluoric acid and water. Because it's a weak acid, it's going to ionize partially. So let's make an ice table. Initial change equilibrium. So initially, we have 0.50 m of HF. Water is a liquid, so we don't need to worry about it. This is going to be 0. Now, the products will increase by x. The reactants will decrease by x because the reaction has to shift to the right if these are zero. It can't shift to the left. So at equilibrium, we're going to have these values. Now the acid dissociation constant Ka is going to equal to the product of the concentrations of H3O plus and F minus divided by the reactant HF. So everything is in the aqueous phase, except water. And we don't include liquids and solids in the equilibrium expression. So now we can replace Ka with what we have here. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. And then we have x times x. And hf is 0.50 minus x. If this number is small, this x becomes negligible. So we're going to eliminate this x. It will change our answer slightly, but usually the amount from which it changes by, we don't have to worry about it too much. So now we can reduce the equation to this. Doing this helps us to avoid the use of the quadratic formula. So let's cross multiply. This is going to give us x squared. And here we're going to have 0.50 times Ka. So x is going to be the square root of the product of these two numbers. Now x is equal to the H3O plus concentration. It's also equal to the fluoride concentration. And it comes out to be 0 0.01897. But we could say about approximately 0 0.019, which is relatively small to 0 0.50. But now that we have the H3O plus concentration, we can now calculate the hydroxide concentration. So it's Kw divided by the hydronium ion concentration. And that's going to be 5.26 times 10 to the negative 13. So that's how you can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration if you're given the concentration of a weak acid solution.
Now let's move on to the last part of the problem. So we're given the concentration of the weak base NH3 and the Kb. How can we find the hydroxide ion concentration? So let's write a reaction. Ammonia is going to react with water. It's a weak base and it's going to partially ionize into NH4 plus and hydroxide. Now we're going to make an ice table like we did before. The initial concentration of ammonia is 0.25. This is zero. So the reaction is going to shift to the right. The products will increase by X. The reactant will decrease by X. Add in the first two rows, we get the last row uh, for the equilibrium value of NH3. So the base association constant is going to equal the concentration of the products, NH4 plus times hydroxide divided by the concentration of the reactant, NH3. Just like before, water is liquid, so it's not included in the equilibrium expression. Now, Kb is 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. NH4 and hydroxide, they're both equal to x. NH3 is 0.25 minus x. So because this is a small number, we could ignore the value of x. Now, notice that x is equal to hydroxide. So once we calculate the value of x, we're going to get our answer because we're dealing with Kb and not Ka. So if we cross multiply, this is going to be x squared is equal to 0.25 times the Kb value. Taking the square root of both results, we get that x, which is hydroxide, that's going to be the square root of 0.25 times 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. So let's go ahead and plug that in. I got 2.12 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the hydroxide ion concentration. That's how we could find it if we're given the concentration of a weak base solution.